In this video, I will be sharing the top reviews of the book called, Blind Tiger, authored by Sandra Brown who is the author of more than 60 New York Times bestsellers, including Sting, Friction, Mean Streak, Deadline and Low Pressure, Lethal. Brown was given an honorary doctorate of humane letters from Texas Christian University. She was named Thriller Master for 2008, the top award given by the International Thriller Writers Association. Other awards and commendations include the 2007 Texas Medal of Arts Award for Literature and the Romance Writers of America's Lifetime Achievement Award. But before we get to the reviews let's see a little bit of what this book is about. The year 1920 comes in with a roar in this rousing and suspenseful novel by number one New York Times best-selling author Sandra Brown. Prohibition is the new law of the land, but murder, mayhem, lust, and greed are already institutions in the moonshine capital of Texas. Thatcher Hutton, a war-weary soldier on the way back to his cowboy life, jumps from a moving freight train to avoid trouble, and lands in more than he bargained for. On the day he arrives in Foley, Texas, a local woman goes missing. Thatcher, the only stranger in town, is suspected of her abduction, and worse. Standing between him and exoneration are a corrupt mayor, a crooked sheriff, a notorious cathouse madam, a sly bootlegger, feuding moonshiners, and a young widow whose soft features conceal an iron will. What was supposed to be a fresh start for Laurel Plummer turns to tragedy. Left destitute but determined to dictate her own future, Laurel plunges into the lucrative regional industry, much to the dislike of the good old boys, who have ruled supreme. Her success quickly makes her a target for cutthroat competitors, whose only code of law is reprisal. As violence erupts, Laurel and, now deputy, Thatcher find themselves on opposite sides of a moonshine war, where blood flows as freely as. Now let's get to the reviews. Karina from Germany says I have been reading and enjoying Sandra Brown books for many years now. And over the years I have come to expect a certain story, her novels are always entertaining, have great romantic suspense, and a good amount of sexual tension between the couples. But when I picked up Blind Tiger I didn't realize that this book would be vastly different to what I had come to expect from this author. Different but good. Blind Tiger is set in the past. The Roaring Twenties. A time when making moonshine was a dangerous way of making a living. Laurel. Young but already going through one life lesson after another, was such a strong woman, that became more obvious with each chapter. She was feisty, smart and brave. And didn't hesitate to do what needed to be done in a very resolute and capable way. Thatcher hitchhiked his way through the US on trains and had to literally jump off to save his skin. That alone was already such a great start to the book. Right after he jumped off, he made his way to Laurel's ranch and from the very first moment, he and Laurel met, there was something in the air. Thatcher was someone who handled everything in a very analytical way. He was calm under pressure, which helped him more than one time. He was assertive when needed. Always supportive and understanding, and never overbearing. Especially when it came to Laurel. Their relationship was a semi-slow burn, nicely paced, especially in regards to the circumstances and time period. Their connection felt authentic and real. Florida from Florida says as a longtime reader of Sandra Brown, I was thrilled to receive this arc for Blind Tiger. This story is steeped in rich historical facts, based in 1920 during the notorious time of Prohibition. Laurel Plummer, a young wife and mother, has been left by her husband in the most horrific and final way, at his father's home in Foley, Texas. A stranger to the area and to her new father-in-law, Irv Plummer, she is welcomed along with her infant daughter. Unfortunately, Irv lives in an old shack without any conveniences miles from town, but Laurel accepts her lot and makes the best of things. Former cowboy, Thatcher Hutton, is returning from World War I to his former ranching life when he comes across Laurel after jumping from a freight train. He is immediately smitten with her. She gives him directions to Foley, the nearest town where after finding lodging he is immediately arrested for the disappearance of the wife of a local doctor. While Thatcher is fighting for his freedom, Laurel is fighting to make a life for herself and her daughter. When an opportunity presents itself, she jumps right in but soon clashes with local corrupt politicians and ruthless competitors. To make matters worse, Thatcher has been released from jail and has now been deputized. 
He inserts himself into her life at every opportunity letting her know his intentions toward her. Ally from the United States says Blind Tiger is unlike any Sandra Brown book I've read before. A mixture of historical fiction, romance, and suspense. It is a sprawling tale of a young widow and a soldier caught up in a moonshine war. Laurel Plummer is grieving over a huge tragedy when she meets the mysterious Thatcher Hutton. Thatcher jumped from a freight train to avoid an attack and happens upon the small Texas town. When he meets Laurel, he is immediately intrigued. However, once Laurel and Thatcher end up on opposite sides of a war and a killer is on the loose, both are put in danger, but find the time to fall in love. I loved how different this was from the usual romantic suspense. Brown clearly did her research and brought to life the time of underground moonshining and speakeasies. It takes a bit in the beginning to flesh out the world and develops the characters, but I thoroughly enjoyed this tale of romance and mystery. I am hoping to someday revisit these characters. Destiny from the United States says Blind Tiger was full of historical madness and fun. Prohibition bootleggers, moonshiners, madams, and dirty lawmen. There is a story arc for pretty much every reader. I was instantly sucked into the story of Laurel and her family and watching her grow as a person as the novel progressed. The other characters were just as richly developed and easy to like. I felt like it was extremely well researched and well written, but at times felt a little drawn out. I felt it dragged in some parts and the explanation of the stills and the shine making is better suited for more of a history lover than me. While the book was long and occasionally drawn out, I felt the ending, last five chapters or so, were rushed to fit in and get the book finished. Maggie from Wisconsin says the Great War is over but almost two years after the armistice, Thatcher Hutton is still finding his way home. Lack of money and no job means he's been playing cards to get cash for meals and hitching rides on freight trains to reach the ranch where he worked as a cowboy before he was drafted. His most recent stint of riding the rails finds him in a freight car full of angry men planning to attack the moment he falls asleep, so he escapes the only way he can, by jumping from the rapidly moving locomotive. He gets away relatively unscathed, but he wasn't able to choose his location and finds himself stuck in the middle of nowhere Texas, walking miles just to reach a domicile. It's not much, just a lean-to with an outhouse a few feet away but he figures the people there can help. He stops to ask for a drink and directions to the nearest town. The woman hanging the washing on the line is cool and anxious to have him gone but she points him toward a nearby small burg, lets him drink from their bucket of fresh water, and gives him a memory to carry on the road. He can't recall ever seeing a sight as pretty as that lovely lady struggling to hang waterlogged sheets on a windy day. Laurel Palmer is still shell-shocked from all the tragedy that has befallen her in the months since the war ended. Her father-in-law Irv has taken her in but as an invalided former railroad worker, he doesn't have much in savings and the two of them can barely make ends meet. They're living in a shack miles away from town and the stranger arriving at their door looking for aid reminds Laurel of just how vulnerable they are. He was handsome and polite, but strong and quick. Irv had been nervous enough to grab his shotgun and Laurel had been nervous enough to realize she needed to start bringing in some money so she and Irv can move closer to town. I have provided the sources of this video in the description, please feel free to check them out. Thank you for watching this video, if you like this video then please subscribe to the channel and share this video.